Right, I'm happy to be here with Leah Cooper, and we're going to talk about some of the things that she's learning as she is building her business. Uh, I think that some of the insights and encouragement will be helpful to all of you who are uh, watching this. Leah, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, George. It's great to be here with you today. Yeah, yeah. And Leah, uh, you're a member of my Master Heart Business Mentoring Group. And in fact, you even are a facilitator for one of the small groups in, in there. So I really appreciate your, um, you know, your willingness to, to bring your kind of good, um, your optimism and your um, productivity and your kind of your passion for self-employment and growing your own business into the group. Um, and actually, that's the first thing I want to ask you is, um, how has it been making connections with others? Um, and, I, you know, when I'm, whenever I'm doing these kinds of uh, what I call progress and learning videos, um, it's not, the purpose is not, you know, to, to get everybody to join my, my programs, but really to, I'm hoping that people who are watching this can, can benefit by learning some of the tips and some of the insights that they could they could apply to their own uh, to their own actions. So, um, so really, my question is for you: is how has connecting with other self-employed people been beneficial for you? Mm, oh, and and please go ahead and introduce yourself. I forgot to mention. Yeah, you know, yeah Tell sure. us, tell us what you do. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm. My, my business is I'm a yoga teacher. So I teach yoga classes here in the Barossa Valley in South Australia. Um, and yeah, I, I use that as a way to connect with people in my community to help them improve their wellness, um, you know, and give them an opportunity to connect with their mind, body and breath through the yoga practice uh, and other workshops and events that I host as well. Um, yeah, and over the last year or so I've also been creating YouTube videos so yoga videos for my YouTube channel which has also helped not only my clients because you know they're feeding back to me saying that you know they'll be doing them at home which is great but also like new people that I can reach in the wider sphere of of um, the world uh, which is really nice to get feedback from them too yeah awesome. and yeah so to answer your question about connections mm -hmm. um, yeah no it's it's a really lovely place to come and and just get momentum from other people who are doing similar things, but completely different. Like everyone, I'm always really fascinated by the different niches that people mention they're working in. And it's things I'd never even thought existed <laughs> really. Um, I feel yoga is like pretty common. Like everyone knows what yoga is, but hearing what some of the, the people in the, in the master heart group do, it's like, wow, I never actually thought that was a thing. And um, just being able to learn and get some of their energy really helps, you know, boost me along the way as well you know because I'm also working full-time so this business really requires that extra bit of energy to to keep my momentum going and having the other people in Master Heart is a really great way to to um yeah to get that momentum and just being able to share stories and and learn from other people sharing their stories in the business realm is really interesting too yeah and for those who are watching and, and not in Master Heart um, you can get this kind of connection by, I mean, if, you know, since you all are uh, watching this on, on YouTube or Facebook, or you're listening to this on my podcast, um, you can come into my public pages and find other people who are commenting to connect with and, and, you know, create some accountability with, um, as you connect with other, you know, self-employed people, um, what they're working on tends to encourage you uh in what you're working on as well um and one of the just, things just to yeah. go on that george that's sure. really what got me into master heart in the first place being involved in your community just through youtube and facebook um already brought that but it's just multiplied so much more being in the master heart group yeah totally and um when one of the things that helps us to stay connected and to keep momentum is that we work we work together on focus mate <laughs> you know, I you and I see, see each other, you know, <laughs> regularly, which I, I re which is available to everybody who's watching this. Everybody here can join Focusmate, and I know you. We both talk about it a lot, but it's really been a game changer for a lot of us. Um, mm -hmm. I'm on there multiple hours a day. Um, you probably are as well. And yeah. Um, but yeah, so everybody watching this, go and and you know consider joining Focusmate. Um, it's mm -hmm. free if you want to do three sessions up to three sessions a week is free otherwise if you if you you know if you want to do unlimited sessions at this time it's only five dollars a month 
but even if it's 10, 15, $20 a month, it would still be so worth it. But anyway, um, so, so uh, one of the um, things that you have been working on, uh, especially this year, is, is to get, uh, get consistent about creating content. And that's a challenge, right? Especially that since you're working full time and, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, and, and you're a mom and, and it's, it's a challenge for anybody to, to stay mm. consistent. But um, what have you been learning about that um, that's helped you to do it? Yeah, it's coming up with a schedule of when you're going to actually create the content, I think is really the key. And I know that's one of your main teachings as well. So uh, at the start of the year, I sort of drew up this planner and a word table and I've just sort of mapped out each week and each day has a set task. And so I know which day I'm going to be recording my yoga video. I know which day I'm going to be drafting my blog post. And then the next day I sort of refine it and then publish it. So and I'm also using a co-working session to do some of that stuff as well, um, which has been really helpful too. So I think, yeah, being really consistent in that way. It was funny because I had, I normally co-work with someone on a Thursday afternoon and she took some time off for a couple of weeks to do some other things. And I, I missed one week where I didn't actually create content and publish it. And I was beating myself up about it. But then I was like, okay, just, just pick it up next week. It's, it's not such a big deal. So um you know, we can get a bit caught up. I think sometimes I want to have to do this every week, every week, every week. But then if you miss a week, it's like, okay, just don't beat yourself up about it. Just start again next week. It's okay. So I think that's yes. important not to, not to force it. It shouldn't be a chore, but if you miss a week because of whatever reason, you know, something else came up, um, your yeah. audience will understand and you've got to, yeah. Yeah. you know, be, be kind to yourself too. Totally. Oh yeah, absolutely. So yes, because if you are, are, harsh you know with yourself you you'll um create this kind of loop i think of the mm. fear of self-punishment <laughs> which creates you know not not wanting to show up because if you mm. show up and, and don't do well or you don't show up you'll you'll self-punish but if you if you're more gentle with yourself and you simply stay stay the course with the intention yeah. then it's like okay always begin again i i remember um, yeah, like a, like a teacher I had many years ago, you know, that was, that was his mantra, just begin again, just begin mm. again, just begin yeah. again. And that's it. That's true. Every day I begin again, you know, every hour, sometimes I have to begin again. And um, exactly. so I appreciate that you, 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 yeah. you brought that up. Um, and just, sorry, just one more thing on that. Yeah. Point. Yeah. Please, was, um, please. Just this weekend, I, I did a three day sort of cleanse detox and um, I normally record a video on Sunday and I was planning to do it but when I got to my mat I just had no energy for it and I, I wasn't going to show up in a way that I wanted to show up in the video so I actually ended up recording an audio instead and, and making it into a video it was like a guided meditation so I showed up in a way where I felt comfortable to where I wasn't going to put myself in front of a camera but I still created something that was you know that I wanted to create as part of that process so adjusting time sometimes according to how you're feeling is also important I think yeah yeah, I like that. You're 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 adapting to mm. you know your 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 commitment for for that period was to create something, and it's like oh I, I, I was thinking of doing a video, but now I can do this instead, and it just, you still created something of value to your audience. And I think that's really the long term um, system or process that creates so much trust with our audience is that we are showing up consistently in some way uh, mm -hmm. to bring you know to bring some encouragement to their life or to bring some some knowledge inspiration etc and of course we're going to link to your um, youtube and, and other things in the notes below so people can check out your journey um, speaking of youtube uh, i know mm -hmm. that for the past couple of weeks there's been kind of a technical glitch on youtube mm -hmm. Um, because uh, it may be for certain accounts because they're they're making some updates and do you want to talk about that experience <laughs> I don't know if it's good to talk about it or not but but you you know you're learning something from it right like you're learning to be then just to give everyone some context like like Leia tried to upload a YouTube video like she normally does and she couldn't do it for like you know she tried to one day and then the next day she could, still couldn't do it etc so it was something that was quite a quite a obviously it's a barrier you can't upload youtube videos to your youtube channel but talk us through kind of what you learned from that uh, patience <laughs> yeah i yeah. think um 
yeah, he did get to a point. It was quite stressful because the video was actually in YouTube. It had been uploaded, but I couldn't publish it. And every time I tried to create, um, edit the, um, the description of the video or add tags or anything like that, or even upload a thumbnail, it just would not keep those changes. And it, I just kept getting this error message. Um, and of course I did the Google search, you know, what's this error message in YouTube, which it seems hundreds of thousands of people have had this issue prior, but there was no actual YouTube response as to why or how or how to fix it. Um, and I got to a point, okay, and I, I reached out to the Master Heart community and I, I posted there, I said, I'm having this trouble. Um, and, you know, thankfully Shailaja, one of the excellent members of Master Heart, who's very active, she, she came up with a couple of strategies for me. And I actually, the first one she mentioned was to actually down, use the creator or the studio app on my phone, which I'd never actually used before. So um, doing it through there and it worked and it would publish the video. So I was cheering that that worked. And then I just walked away from YouTube. I didn't want to look at it again um, for a few days because it just, there was so much stress from that moment. And it was frustrating not being able to publish the video because, you know, I had this deadline. I don't like to use that word, but um, I wanted to put the video out there, but it wasn't letting me. And so sometimes, yeah, I think walking away is sometimes a good strategy. When you try all the avenues, that's all you can do really and just take a breather. Um, but I'm really grateful for being able to reach out to other people um, and get some really useful advice that helped me through that challenge. So, yeah. yeah, and I actually uploaded the video that I did the guided meditation on Sunday and it worked fine oh. and it published it. So, oh, that's great. Oh, so, mm. uh, so is it working now on the computer? Yeah, it's working now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So isn't that amazing? Like, like mm. I find that to be true with uh, most tech glitches mm. from you know, including from the big websites like YouTube and Facebook and et cetera. It's like, well, it's not working today, but they're probably just working something out in the back That's end. Right. And, yeah. and it probably just takes, sometimes it takes a few weeks, unfortunately. Mm. Yeah. Um, but most of the time it takes like 24, 48, 72 hours, and then they've got mm. it fixed. And some, yeah. and for the things that take a few weeks to sort itself out, like right now there's a, there's a glitch with Facebook groups where um, okay. they, they, they had, uh, they had a new version of groups where they unified the hashtags and the topics, but mm. then as of a few weeks ago, they went back to the old version. <laughs> so now the hashtags and topics is no longer unified. Anyway, it's like, mm. I, I, I've just learned over time, just like, yeah, these glitches just happen. And it's like, yeah, it's like, I guess one of the, one of the key skills of joyful productivity is to shrug our shoulders and go, oh, well, mm. That's yeah. not working right now. We'll just that's do something it. else. <laughs> exactly. And I think that's what you're, I mean, that's, you've given us some examples already, you know, just mm. that, you know, for example, when you weren't feeling well to do a video, you do, a, you do an audio and he's like, mm. oh, well, you know, we'll just try something else. Yeah, exactly. really, uh, mm. yeah really. Um, so another thing that you did recently that I thought was really, really great that you posted about in MasterHeart was that you did some audience research. And um, maybe you could tell us about that experience. Like, what did you do and what, was it helpful, et cetera? Mm, so there were, there's, I've been doing two types of audience research. I did the one I think I posted about was about my yoga retreat survey. So I want to hold a yoga retreat. I try and do one every year. I usually do it around February when it's summer here in Australia. Um, but because of COVID, I put things on hold at the start of this year. And so I just wanted to find out from my clients when they would be interested in going on a retreat you know what sort of would they prefer the beach or going bush um, how many nights what types of you know how much they'd like to spend on this retreat adventure that they were going to go on um, because I was looking at a couple of different places and I wanted to make sure that I was going to book the place that suited the most people um, and I don't know whether the people who completed the survey will actually come on a retreat but it just gave me some good information to base my judgment on so um, you know, I discovered they didn't want to spend more than $500. They preferred September as the best month out of all the months I gave them. Um, most people wanted to go to the beach. So they were some good parameters that I could work with and then make that, that reservation for the, for the um, retreat venue. And the other types of audience research I've been doing is just some one-on-one -on -one conversations with some of my yoga students. Um, I've actually got one coming up in a couple of weeks time. So, and I've done, I've only done three this year so far, but I think three is pretty good considering I've done zero <laughs> before that. So um, yeah, it's really nice to just sit down and have a chat with these people that come to my classes regularly and, and see what, learn about, you know, how they're 
enjoying what I do, you know, what other, you know, health and well-being things they might be struggling with or want some assistance with or what other products or services they're using in this sphere and, and possibly some ideas for some new videos or courses or classes or workshops that I can then look at um, creating for them too. I love that you're doing that. And thank you for explaining what, you know, uh, both types you, 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 and this is something that I often try to encourage people to do this audience research or market okay. research. Uh, and, you know, really there are essentially, well, there's two of the main things that I often talk about, you know, surveying and then one-on-one -on -one conversations. And, you know, with the surveying, you learned about um, the parameters of the ideal, the more ideal retreat for them. By the way, you, you mentioned the beach or the bush. And, um, you know, in Australia, you say, you all say bush. In, in North America, bush is literally a bush. <laughs> it's like when you say, go into the bush, I'm like, go into the bush. How can you get into a bush? <laughs> so I guess you mean forest, I guess. Maybe. Yeah, we're, 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 yeah we're, kind of the forest, yeah. Kind of the forest, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like everyone fit into one bush. Um, yeah, but that's really, really prickly. No. Um, so, so surveying and then one-on-one -on -one conversations is also something that I encourage a lot of clients to do. It's like, it's like, if you don't really sit down with your audience members, like, and when I say audience, it's like, you know, people might have, people might not have a big following yet. I think most of the people watching this don't have a big following, but even if you have a few people who, who comment regularly or, or even have a few clients, like you're doing it with your clients and your students, you know, it's like, it's so helpful, like, you know, all the things people can rewind this and to hear what, what kind of things you ask them. Um, so did that, like, before you did these one-on-one -on -one conversations, mm. so how do you think it's going to change, I guess, your product development from before you've done these to going forward now that you've done mm. these? Well, I think I need to do a few more. <laughs> I, I guess what I've, learn is uh, just getting some insights you know I have one one student she's a classically trained singer and she um, she's the conductor of a local choir group and she really likes some of the lung classes that I've done and and have online as well and she likes to do them to improve her lung capacity and her ability to sing and you know that sort of gave me the idea when I had this conversation with her about that, I thought, oh, you know, yoga for singers, you know, maybe that's something I could explore as a workshop or even a, a series um, that I could, you know, a course that I could sell perhaps. Not that I'm a trained singer myself, but, um, you know, just get some tips from her perhaps that I could incorporate into the class um, or even just do a quick, you know, YouTube kind of video as a one-off just to see what the response rate is first. Um, you know, another student was says, you know, she's got stiff ankles. So that prompted me to create a couple of yoga for ankles videos as well. So it's really just getting some ideas at the, this point to, to create some more videos for my YouTube channel um, and think about some potential courses or workshops that I could run. Um, you know, it's a lot to juggle. So I'm just, you know, little bits and pieces is good just to keep things going in the background. Um, yeah, but I really wanna do a lot more and, and speak to a lot more people and find out what, what their needs are and what they enjoy. Yeah. And you basically just named a third method of audience research, which is to create content and see among the things yeah. you create, what gets yeah. the best response, because what gets the best response is probably gonna be great for a product or a yeah. service as well. So yeah. I, I love that you're, you're doing all, all, all of that. Um, so one, one maybe final topic that we should talk about is how are you juggling all of it? <laughs> you know, like, like you've got, you know, you're, you're, you're a parent, uh, mm -hmm. you have a job, um, you know, other things I'm sure in life and you are grow, you know, developing a business, which you have been actually for years. Mm, um, yeah. and you know, you're a teacher, so you have students to, to work with. So any, anything you want to share in terms of how you balance all that, right? Mm. Well, I have a pretty set morning routine that really gets mm. me grounded for the day. Do you want to share a bit about it? Like what, yeah. what is part of your morning routine? Um, yeah. So of course, you know, morning, the first thing I do actually, when I wake up is I'm in bed, I have a book next to my bed, which is like, um, it's like every day of the year and it's like a morning affirmation or something like that. And so every morning I'll open that up and I'll read whatever the day's affirmation is. I usually read a couple of times. 
Um, and that's kind of like, oh, you know, a good sort of start to the day. Um, but I get up and I do a combination, depends on the time and on the weeks I have my daughter with me compared to the weeks I don't, it does change. So, but I'll do about 45 minutes to an hour of yoga. I'll go for a half an hour walk. I'll do 10 minutes of meditation. Um, usually after my walk, I have a cold shower as well. So, and then I also do some journaling for about five or 10 minutes. So that's, or I do all that before, before breakfast, before looking at my calendar, before looking at social media, that all happens prior to- So you wake up at 2 a.m. then? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually about quarter to six. So quarter to six, okay. Still yeah, pretty early, pretty early. It's still pretty early. I'm trying to get earlier, but um, yeah. And it does take a couple hours. I admit that it's, it's a long process, but I don't have to travel for work. I work from home. So that's a real joy and benefit yeah. to all that. Um, and what else, you know, I, I think the journaling for me specifically, because I started that on Christmas day last year, actually in 2020, and I've been journaling twice a day, morning, evening, since that day. And that's been a real, I feel for me, since I've started that, I've had this sense of abundance, this growing abundance in my life, just by writing things down that I'm grateful for, writing things down that I appreciate, um, and how I'm going to show up. I like always in the morning, I talk about how I'm going to show up in the day, you know, what I'm excited about in the day. And even if it's, sometimes it's things I'm not even excited about, it's just things that I have to do, but I may as well be excited about them because I have to do them anyway. And I found that's actually really shifted my mindset a lot. And, and that helps me get through all the stuff that I need to do. I use Focusmate, like you mentioned, um, you know, several times a day. Um, and use, use that for my work and for my business. So two different purposes. And I think because I work from home for my work full-time job, that enables me to also spend a little bit more time on my business because I don't have to commute. Um, my kitchen's right there. If I you know, have to cook something, it's easy to get to. I can hang out the washing in my lunch break. It's, it's all those little bits that, you know, when you have to work outside of your home, they're the things that take up your time when you come back from work. So um, taking a 10 minute break in between, you know, focus mate sessions gives me the opportunity to just get those little tasks done. And it doesn't feel like a big chore at the end of the day. Um, and how and do really you, and, and I think one of the uh, challenges is distractions. Um, uh, so there are, uh, maybe I'll talk briefly three types. Like one is um, you're balancing your work and your business. Mm. How do you stay focused on business things? If like, I don't know, work emails you or, or needs you for some reason? Like, is there, how do you set a boundary for, for that? Oh, um, well, I try to do all my business stuff out of hours. <laughs> so, okay. but and then, so yeah. your work is very, you're, they're very set. Like, okay, after this hour. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't, stuff. I don't yeah. work after, you know, I work between set hours for my work mm. um, and shall never Yes, <laughs> yes those barriers That's yeah good. i'm pretty strict about that i'm pretty strict about that so and what about what about a second distraction which is well at home home life so, so like you know your uh, your daughter needs something or hmm. how, how does how does that how do you set boundaries there yeah so on the weeks when i have her with me um i i put more time aside to spend with her and i okay. put less um, less effort into the business on those weeks and then weeks she's not around that's when I sort of gear things up a little bit mm. more um, and try to get some things done um, but you know she's 12 now so she's fairly self-sufficient um, even on the weekend I will sit down and do some work and you know she's she's a big minecrafter and um, you know she'll spend time doing minecraft or doing something on her computer as well or even art she does a lot of art on her phone at the moment on an app so um, I know she's not sort of going astray there, but it's, it also gives me an opportunity to, to, to show up for my work. And she knows I do focus mate with you sometimes on a Sunday. So, <laughs> so she's like, she knows that that's her time to do what she wants as well. Yeah. Mm. Nice. And uh, final distractions. How, how, how do you deal with social media? So, um, mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a good one well like I said I don't I try not to go on social media until after I've done all my morning stuff okay good. um and I try not I don't go on it after dinner either so once I've had dinner that's all shut off um I do find it sometimes at work I'll be maybe checking Facebook here and there and I, I was really strict at one point I was only checking in Facebook 
once in the morning and once in the afternoon, but sometimes I get distracted and I want to check it more. So I've just got to be really disciplined there. And I don't, I don't check my emails that often either, like maybe twice a day. So they're not distracting me, but I recently have been getting into clubhouse and um, joining some interesting discussions on there about the topics I'm interested in. So that's been a little bit distracting, but it's all about setting boundaries. So I just need to make sure that I set some more healthy boundaries around that. So I don't get off, off derailed, but that's actually been a really interesting experience, just connecting with people there in niches that I'm interested in as well. So yeah, that's been an interesting process. Nice, nice. And Clubhouse is not yet available on Android as of this recording, no. so I haven't even been able to, to get in there yet. But soon, mm -hmm. soon, I'm sure it'll be everywhere. Um, so as we finish up, like maybe you could tell us, tell the those who are watching this, what you what kind of services you offer. Ah, oh, yeah. So well, I obviously yoga teaching. Um, and you do I, this via Zoom as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I have. At the moment, I've gone back to teaching three classes a week, and I also offer those classes as a Zoom option to students who want to join via Zoom. Um, it's all Australian times, so there's two evening classes and a morning class. So I'm not sure how that would work in other time zones, but you're more than welcome to check them out. I am considering how I can do a couple of maybe online, purely online classes for a wider audience. So I've I'm, I'm got that on the back burner and looking into how I can do that. Um, so that it's at times from, that people, you know, in other places of the world could join in. Um, like I mentioned, I've got my YouTube channel. So that's, that's a really, I really like to share that because even people I work with now, I've shared it with people I work with and I had a chat with someone the other day and she was like, oh, I did your, I did your first, I did my first yoga video with you the other day. And she was really excited. And I was, I was like, oh, that's really, you know, I felt really, ah, oh, you know, <laughs> I'm reaching more people and that's that feels really good so that's a sort of a great place for people to start if they're interested in doing some yoga with me and I have a few online courses that I've created they're seasonal so I've got a spring summer autumn and winter yoga series so um, they're for sale on my website and I also do workshops occasionally seasonal workshops cooking workshops um, but they're again mostly in-person type workshops and a retreat as well yeah that's that's yeah. mainly what i do mm. great well i'm gonna of course put all the links uh, in the notes below leah thank you so much thanks for being um a really uh, a really wonderful member of master heart um and for the work that you do for your students for your clients and for your fellow focus mate partners so <laughs> thanks, George. Um, thanks for all that you yeah. do no thank you it's been a real um pleasure to to finally you know, to have met you so, you know, a year or two ago and, and to be part of this group and, and just learn so much from you and all the people in Master Heart. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really changed my life in a way. Like, yeah, mm. I wouldn't be where I am now without, without all the stuff that I've gotten from you. Oh, mm. Grateful, grateful. All right. Well, folks, check out the links below and um, enjoy Leah's videos and courses.